14, Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, we'd like to essentially try the docking again uh, with the normal procedures prior to going to more uh, drastic alternate uh, procedures. Uh, we'd like you to reconfigure the DAP. R1 should be 11102 for docking. I uh, would like you to go to extend release and hold it for uh, at least five seconds and then uh, return to retract and uh, proceed with one more try at a normal docking, over. Okay, we'll put a narrow dead band in and uh, we'll go extend uh for five seconds at least, and back to retract and uh, bang it again. Roger. As uh, you heard, uh, Capcom uh, Fullerton uh, passed along to uh, Stu Rusa and other crew members of 14 that uh, we're going to make another docking attempt uh, with the uh, established procedures uh, prior to uh, reconsidering uh, alternate plans. We're at uh, 4 hours uh, 16 minutes and now into the flight uh, we show uh, Apollo. Houston, uh, make your closing rate on this try uh, not not fast, not slow, just a normal closing rate. Okay, we'll try it. I thought that's what I had first time, but we'll give it a go. Okay, we'll try it. I thought that's what I had first time, but we'll give it a go. Did I that? The first time uh, looked that way to us, we just like to try it again. Okay. Apollo lunar landing missions. And of course, that is just speculation, but NASA was pitting its hopes on the fact that everything would come off flawlessly and smoothly and that we'd be seeing beautiful color pictures of the surface of the moon and these men carrying out the most in-depth exploration of the moon to date. And I think Spiro Agnew was at the Cape today and he mentioned in his little speech that now we're on our way again and that all those fears that we've had before are uh, are behind us and behind the space program and we'll be going on beyond the moon to interplanetary exploration. But now there's a big question mark hanging right on your well, John, screen. I'd like to uh, just repeat for those viewers who have, may have just joined Channel 5 in our coverage of the difficulties of the docking of the Apollo 14 that what you're seeing is a view from the color TV camera aboard the command module uh, Kitty Hawk. The top side of the lunar module Antares the opening to which they're trying to penetrate in order to affect the docking and around it the sort of halo are the panels of the third stage adapter that holds the lunar module until it is extracted so we're in effect looking down if you will at the opening the hatchway the docking area whichever you wish to call it of the lunar module and terrace as seen from the command module kitty hawk and that's where all the trouble is taking place, that little circular area there with the three scratches and the 12 latches that will not latch. We may seem to be repetitious for those of you who have been with uh, Alan since I the know beginning we're repetitious. of this. <laughs> we, we are definitely yeah. repetitious for those who have been along all along. But of course, people are tuning in. Uh, I, somebody in our programming department will hate me, but I don't know what's supposed to be coming on Channel 5 at 9 o'clock. But whatever it is, people presumably are tuning in for that program and are then finding this strange looking picture on their screen. So we feel a little obligated to re-explain that there is a serious, if conceivably critical problem for the Apollo, not for the crew, but for the, for the mission, which was to land men on the moon, of course, which is now threatened by this problem of trying to dock the two spacecraft together. Normally, and in all past missions that I can recall, a very routine maneuver without a hitch in this particular, in this particular area, and it caught a lot of people off guard because suddenly a problem develops where nobody expected it to develop. Well, as I recalled earlier, John, I believe it was during the Apollo 11 flight. I think it was the Apollo 11 flight, or perhaps it was the Apollo 10 flight, which did not land on the moon, but uh, the lunar module did sweep over. And I think it was the Apollo 11 that uh, Mike Collins had some difficulty redocking after the, uh, with the lunar module ascent stage after the uh, moon uh, landing and then uh, after the lunar module ascent stage had returned to the command module 
Uh, it's a very ticklish operation, and at first he didn't know that contact had been made. It was so gentle. But now it's not a question of... Right. Now, look. Did he say hard docking? Mission Control when that report came uh, from Al Shepard. We're at four hours, uh, 58 minutes, uh, standing by. Uh, we show 14 at 20,000. Well, John, that's it. We've been sitting here waiting for about an hour and uh, 45 minutes for that event. If you first do not succeed, try, try again. confusion there, John, at first because of the audio quality from space and, uh, of course, the excitement at Houston. We weren't sure exactly if, indeed, they had finally docked, but uh, we surmised that they had, judging from the exuberation and the applause that went up at Mission Control, and indeed, finally, let me try to recalculate, almost... Uh, it's been here two hours. Uh, it's been... Uh, just about two hours after they should have docked, they finally did, indeed, dock. And now, coming up, if we can move on to other things at this point in time, there will be the evasive maneuver, and of course the extraction first of the lunar module from the uh, SLA, the Spacecraft Lander Adapter, which is the uh, topmost part of the third stage of the Saturn booster. Uh, of course, now that they are connected, the uh, command service module will gradually draw back from the third stage, and as it does, it will pull with it the lunar module and Terrace. And at that point in time, an evasive maneuver, as it's called, will be performed, kicking the third stage, if that's still possible at this late point in the mission, onto a course that will impact it on the moon so that they can have those seismic experiments. Uh, we, as you perhaps heard from uh, Mission Control, that wraps up your picture. Let's go back to uh, bars and tones. We had an excellent picture, I believe, and uh, certainly a long look at that picture, John, of the uh, attempt to dock the uh, lunar module with the command module and if anything we can say they did a great job and uh, we can certainly appreciate the live TV coverage we got. It's kind of interesting that we uh, we went up there to get live TV coverage of this routine docking which they are now uh, the withdrawal of the uh, of the lunar module as you said from the third stage which they are presumably now doing that we will not see because they've shut off the camera after the very unroutine coverage that we got. Mm -hmm. I must confess, folks, that you know we have been sitting here for a while, and just as they made the docking, someone handed John a cup of coffee, and he's madly trying to hide it, And but we have to be human at times, so if you'd like me to put it out of your way, John, I'll put oh, it down right. here. So if, that, I can't, uh, if I can't be human and drink it, you might as well put it out of the way. <laughs> it was a good hard dock, uh, according to uh, Mission Control, and everyone is happy now. The difficulty that had the potential of having to abort the flight has been corrected. 
There has been a hard docking. The latches have latched. Whether all 12 have latched, we do not know. But there is the report of a hard docking, which would indicate that all the latches did latch properly, all 12 of them. If they did not, however, they could have still accomplished the docking with just three latches latching. I think it's a uh, fairly uh, good asser. Uh, I think we can ascertain at this point in time that the third stage will be kicked off successfully toward the moon and that right now our next big object will be the first mid-course correction which should come on Tuesday of which there are possibly four. We should be getting some live TV transmissions and we'd like to remind our viewers that for the highlights of the flight of the Apollo 14 John and or myself will be here, including the all-important first EVA, which will run more than four hours, and in which, of course, you'll see a variety of experiments conducted from Frau Murrow, uh, the landing site originally of the Apollo 13, but now the landing site on the moon of the Apollo 14. John, do you have any other comments? Uh, I think you have to sort of I rush down to the newsroom and get 10 o'clock I've up. got, right, 50 four minutes or so to put together, uh, help put together a newscast, but hopefully a lot of people have been working on that already. Uh, I think I think the only problem that could arise now is if they don't trust this docking, docking uh, procedure, if they don't trust the hardware now, and they've got several, they've got an undocking around the moon and a redocking to go, but I don't, uh, I don't see how this would really affect the mission since once they've undocked, they don't have to worry about it till they get back, unless they think that uh, it would be so critical trying to redock that they're going to get into a situation of having spacemen just crawling through space to make that transfer when they come back from the moon. Right. It's too early to tell yet, but because of the difficulties that they had with this docking, I would not be surprised to see them pick up, pick up the Alan Shepard uh, idea of... Uh, uh, depressurizing the CSM when they go into the lunar module just to make sure that if there wasn't proper uh, docking there would not be a catastrophe. John, I'll let you get back to the preparation of the overall 10 o'clock news and uh, for us, uh, this is Alan Smith for the in Channel 5 Apollo 14 mission crew saying stick with us throughout the entire nine days of the Apollo 14 mission and we'll bring you the highlights.